Hey Construct2 fans, welcome back and today I'm going to show you how to implement a very basic but still quite powerful for being what it is and so simple screenshot feature within your desktop export of games using the Node WebKit plugin which allows you access to many desktop functions. So what we're going to do first is we're going to actually start with an or the real time strategy sorry, real time strategy demo because I want to show you guys how to implement this in an already fairly developed game and, and how simple it is to add. So we're actually going to need three object, three new object types that are not provided in this basic template. We're first going to need Node WebKit, of course, which is platform specific. And we need that to be able to write the screenshot image data to a single file. Then we're going to need the browser browser object and that is only because the specific function that we need to call is not available in to in any construct to app plugin you know etc which is kind of unfortunate but it's not a huge deal and it doesn't make much of a difference and then finally we are going to need the keyboard object so that way we can bind it to something very to a key that's you know very simple and that is often used in a lot of you know games where you just sort of click a button and then you can expect a screenshot to be saved. So what we're going to do is since this handy dandy miscellaneous group is already open for us, we're going to create press B and B again because this is going to take up a whole two events which is very nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to need we need on key pressed and then what we're going to do is we're going to actually use the return key in a previous filming of this I actually used the F10 key and of course that was what was hardwired to my Camtasia Studio recording software. That was very intelligent of me. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go with the basic return key, also known as, you know, like the enter key. So what we're going to do is now we need a system action, and it's called actually called snapshot, not screenshot. Not really sure why. It doesn't really matter. But we're going to do that. Now, uh, JPEG quality has absolutely no impact on the PNG that's reserved, you know, solely for... JPEG. So JPEG quality, JPEG. If you're going to do PNG, it saves it at 100% quality and the best. I don't like JPEGs. Well, let's just leave it at that. So then afterwards, we need the let's see, uh, event trigger, and that's also going to be a snapshot thing. So we're going to type the snapshot here, and we're going to do on canvas snapshot layers and layout. So once this happens, we need to call a specific action in Node WebKit, and that is writing a file. And that is pretty much the only reason why we actually need Node WebKit is because when you're exporting to desktops, a lot of these uh, privileges like write to be able to write to the app folder are already allowed on desktops most of the time. Now, however, if you have your game and say for God knows what reason, the directory of your operating system, and you don't have write privileges, of course it's not going to be able to. So for most users, they will have write privileges to wherever your game's executable is. So then, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do path. Now we need to access. Sorry, we need to access. Wow, I can't type today. We need to access the Node WebKit expression, and that would be app folder. So that's basically its parent folder. You know, again, wherever the executable generally is, and that already includes one of these slashes. I can't remember which for the directory. So then, all we need now is now we can say, okay, let's create the file, the folder, or the, sorry, the file is going to be called screenshot underscore, and then we're going to add a little bit of random data in order to ensure that it's not going to save any other screen, over any other screenshots. You can also use um, a system time plugin, such as by uh, Rohohound. I can't, I still don't know if it's Rojohound or Rohohound, but Roho sounds better because it's red. Anyway, so we're going to do a popular floor random and we're going to say, let's see, one million, oops, that's not one million, that's a million, okay, to ten million. And that is so, it actually will not ever be this number, it'll be one less than this number, so you can keep the same amount of digits no matter what. I don't know, it looks better than the eye, more pleasing, I don't know, that's just me. And then of course, we're going to do an, and we're going to do another string, and we're going to do .png, that is the file extension. Of course you would need that, or, or the operating system, you would be confused. And then of course the contents are going to be the canvas snapshot. However, we need to do something to this canvas snapshot, because when you take a snapshot of the canvas using the system event, or um, action, I should say, it'll actually encode it into base64, and then add a header, add some header data to specify what exactly 
this you know this data is. So what we're going to do, and unfortunately there aren't any expressions built in to construct to that have what we need to be able to decode base64 data. So what we're actually going to do is what we need is that's what we need the browser for. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm not going to try to write all this by hand, but I'm going to show you basically what the chunk of this looks like. So we're going to cut and paste this. Now, here's a little breakdown. We're basically calling a browser expression, execute JS, and this will, like it says, execute whatever JavaScript is contained within the parentheses. So in this case, we're actually using a very, very handy function to be able, it's called A to B, to be able to convert, or sorry, decode base64 data into the PNG image data that we need to save. Now this token at is also a very common expression here in construct2, and this will return the nth token from a string. So what that means is, I told you before that there was a header, which is basically information that comes before the PNG image data. Now, what we're saying here is we're going to take the second token, because 0 would indicate the first token, 1 indicates the second token, and so on. So we need the second token as separated by a comma, because the header, there's in this format, it saves it as header, comma, data. We don't need any of that header, we just want the data. As a result, we want the second token from the string, and the string is the canvas snapshot. And that is the data that is created when we call this action. I really hope you guys understand so far. You don't necessarily need to understand all this in order to be able to use it properly, because this is about everything you'll ever need right here. Now this can be modified, like I said before, with you know a, a date, date timestamp, you know whatever you want, just to make it a little clearer to your user. But in this case, this will probably be you know whatever you need until uh, the developers at Sierra actually had this as a function, or sorry, as an expression in, which I'm hoping they do because this is kind of handy. So once we're done with that, we're gonna we're gonna just quickly review it here. So on return press, we take the snapshot, we write an image file to the disk, wherever the executable is. So now what we need to do is we're going to export project. Now, uh, of note, you cannot export n using Node WebKit to a desktop if you do not have a personal, educational, or business license for Construct2. Now, you can still write all of this code for it, so that way when you do buy a license, you will be ready to export to desktop, but, you know, just, just letting you guys know here. So what we're going to do is export this, Open the destination folder. We're going to go to Windows 32, unless uh, unless you're running one of these, in which case go to those, or uh, exp or you know send it off to your desktop because you can't actually run construct in those. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to play the game a little here, and then when the time is right, when they start attacking, we're going to press the enter. And if you saw a little pause, that's going to be normal. Uh, unfortunately, there's no way to make that go away because it does take a lot of processing power. I believe someone mentioned that it accesses the GPU uh, graphics processing. So as a result, it's a little intensive when you're trying to do all of this. All right, and here's the screenshot generated. And let's, let's let you guys take a look. Perfect. Bam. That is exactly what we wanted. And that's all I have for you guys today. So uh, thank you very much for watching. And hopefully I went a little slower, was a bit more descriptive this time. I know someone mentioned that in some of my earlier videos were I was going a little too fast. But anyway, I will actually be providing an exported uh, CapEx of this particular project. Uh, I'm probably going to annotate it up a little bit, but just to make sure that you, when you guys download it, or if you do happen to share it, that people do understand, you know, what this is. And feel free to share it. But yeah, you know, uh, thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you all later.